we're just down and we're out and we're whooped and we're we're just struggling and hanging on by our fingertips. But he's coming after a triumphant church. And let me tell you what, I believe our better days are even ahead. Our greater times are even ahead. We're going to see more than we have ever seen before. Honey, you're going to walk through Walmart and people are going to come up out of wheelchairs. You are going to begin to pray for the sick and you're going to see them healed instantaneously. You are going to get around people who are bound in demonic spirits and them things are coming out in Jesus' name because you walked in the room and you're carrying in you the Holy Ghost. Do not think we're whooped because we're not. We are more than victorious. We are more than conquerors in Christ Jesus. Lift your head and surrender your heart to the Holy Ghost because he's going to do what we can't even begin to imagine. And it is breaking forth in a greater measure every single day. When it's dark out, somebody doesn't say, somebody turn down the darkness. They say, somebody turn on the light. Yeah. Honey, you're the light. The light of the Holy Ghost. Jesus Christ lives in each and every one of us. And I'm telling you, what is about to break forth is going to be greater than you've ever seen. It's going to be more than you've ever seen. But we're going to have to surrender completely to God. Die to ourself. Take up our cross and follow him. Amen. And praise the Lord. He's into the resurrection business. Amen. Turn seas in 
testify to the Lord. We believe what the word of God says. It is yes and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I'm sure where Donald is. I wonder how close you are to the cross today, though. Amen. We got stake took close to the cross. On that day that Jesus was hanging on that cross, there were two thieves. One hung, hung on his right, one hung on the left. And one of them called out to him and said, you know, if you were the Messiah, if you were the Christ, or if you can, get us down from here. You know, save us. So the thief on the other side, he said, I, I know who you are. I believe it. I believe in you. I think it was, you know, you may, you may challenge me on this. I'm not trying to be funny here. But it was probably the last thing that he stole, you know. Because sometimes people always look at, you know, our works, right? What we've got to do to be saved. You know, and I, and I believe in right living, right? I, I believe we're known, you know, by, by the, the, the tree is known by its fruit. But on that day. Even at his last and final moment, as far as the thief, you know, he looked, he called upon Jesus. And Jesus told him, today, you'll be with me in paradise. But it took a surrender, right? It, it took a surrender. And I know that can be a struggle in all of our lives here is just is surrendering to the will of God for our life. Surrendering to the plan of God. But how many, how many look as this, as this celebration of hope, as this day of hope, you know, that is our hope. To give, to give our surrender, to give our life, to lay, because he laid his life down for us. We, we can love him because we know how, because he first loved us. He gave us the example of his love so that we know how, right, to live for him. And I know today, you know, in here, outside there, I know you all can hear me out there. So listen up, right, while you're eating on your barbecue sandwich or your fish sticks or whatever. Lay it all down. Yes. Surrender your life to Jesus. Look to the hope of the world. Jesus Christ. He is the, he is the living hope. Yes. Sometimes in our circumstances, you know, we, we look to those temporal things. It may be those things that addict us. It may be pornography. It may be drugs. It may be alcohol. It may be, you know, being angry at one another. It may be just being saying the wrong things or treating one another awful, right? There's lots of things that we try to escape those things of our life, but come on, Jesus Christ, he's our living hope. Yes. Yes. We can look to him. He, it, we know he is eternal life. Yes. He is our life. But too often we look to those temporal things, those things. You know, I, I remember my son, he asked one of the young men after he went out and um, you know, drank himself to oblivious, right? And he asked him, well, what did it, what did it change? It didn't change anything. He, he woke up. He, after he becomes sober, he, he still faced the same things in life. Those things that are temporary do not change us. Those things that we reach for that are so easy, they do not, they cannot change us. But we're here today, amen? Because Jesus Christ the living word. Amen. We believe. Amen. Don't underestimate your faith. Right? The enemy always wants to come and get us to say, hey, he wants to challenge what we know about Jesus. Do we know enough? Do we have enough? You do. When you have Jesus, you have everything. You have everything to overcome that situation in your life. You have everything right there in your heart. It's with, he's within you to rescue you. To deliver you from the hand of the enemy. Amen. Amen. And he's here today. Amen. And I think as we've enjoyed, you know, the worship, you know, from Pastor Vernie and, you know, this, this team here today, you know, but we need to, we need to take a moment, you know, and surrender our hearts, surrender our lives. Amen. As we get ready to change, you know, a little bit of the order of service, and we've got Stephen McWhorter going to come here in a few moments. But, you know, we want to open these altars today. 
And if you need to surrender anything, it, it may you may feel like, well, you know, it's just been, it may be something this morning that happened. It may be something that's happened over the last week, but come on. The Bible says, this is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. And it's easy to clap our hands to a rhythm. It's easy to get excited about a song. But come on, when the Spirit of the Lord starts moving, he's dealing with the hearts of people. Because this is the day the Lord has made. It, what, it, what is it? Is it because it's so beautiful and we were so concerned about what the weather would do to us today? No, it's the day because he's given us this day to make things right with him. Amen? He's given us this opportunity. We think, well, yeah, you know, we, we're going to be part of what Donald is doing. and We're going to be part of Celebrate Hope. But, man, God has such bigger things in store than big tents and concessions and, and live music, right? He, he wants to get into our hearts. He wants, to, he wants to deal with the heart of man. He wants to make all things new, amen? And he wants, to, he wants to help us here today, amen? So let's just take a moment, amen? Let's just open this altar here today. And if there's anything that you need, we want the pastors to maybe just step up here for a moment and just, just, just have a moment here just of reverence for God's spirit, amen? just have a moment of reverence for God's spirit because he's here today. I mean, he's in this place. And if you, if there's any un, uncertainty, and I know we can be assured of a lot of things in our lives. And I'm not trying to talk you out of your salvation. Trust me, I am not that, I'm not that kind of minister. Right? But without a shadow of a doubt, Amen. I don't bring people to the altar because of fear. I mean, I, I, could, I, could, I could scare you. I mean, hell's hot, right? It's not a place that we want to go for eternity. Amen? But I'll tell you what compelled me the most of surrendering it all to the Lord is how much he loved me. Even when I failed. Even when I messed up, his love never failed. He never gave up on me. And listen, he'll never give up on you. You may have fallen down. You may have made mistakes, but he'll never give up on you. Amen? Testify. We're going to have some testimonies here in a minute, I'm sure. Far more testimonies. And just Man, we have such great testimonies in this room today. Such great representation of what God is doing. Amen. In the lives of, of our hearts. Amen. So let's just bow our heads for a moment. Let's just honor his presence here. Heavenly Father, God, we just thank you, Lord. Lord, this is a day of, of, of celebrate hope. Jesus, you are our hope. You are the living hope. You are the lamb that was sacrificed from the foundation of the world for our sin. Lord, when our sin is great your grace is greater your grace is greater but God help us today or to live the lives that you've designed for us to live out the will and the plan of God for our lives Lord help us Lord help us to be that image and that representation of Christ in the earth Lord help us Lord let there be a boldness God upon these people or because as as Bernie stated earlier, Lord, we're, we're, you're not coming back for a broken church. You're not coming back for a crippled church, but you're coming back for a bride that is prepared and, and ready for you to see you. So Lord, let every heart that's here today, Lord, let it surrender. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Pastor Ed. You mean the mic? Yeah. <laughs> you leave a preacher a mic? And it's been good to be here today. I'm good to see all my friends and brothers. And what I like the most is there's a lot of different churches represented here. We are the body of Christ here today. And I believe that Jesus is looking down and saying, there's my people. Denominations can't hold us down. Theology can't hold us down. But his spirit is going to lift us up today. And I thank God for each and every one. I thank God for Donald. Stephen's going to come up here in a few minutes. He's going to sing. He's going to end with his testimony. And we'll have another altar call. Okay? 
But how many of you felt the presence of God today? Can I get an amen? amen. Come on, can I get an amen? Amen. amen. But I just thank the Lord today. I thank God that uh, he started this back in uh, three years ago. Back in 2012, I had such a burden in my jail for those that were incarcerated, those that were there because of drugs. And by the way, I'm the jail commander of Union County Sheriff's uh, Jail here in uh, Union County. But I'm going to be retired in March. I want to give up the jail commander. But God placed me there about 13 years ago. I didn't know why. But then about six weeks after I got there and started full time, I got to walk through that jail and look through the eyes of him. I didn't see child molesters. I didn't see thieves. I didn't see drug addicts. I saw people who needed him. And as I walked through that jail, I just followed him. And I've seen, I seen his spirit fill that place up so much. And it was like revival. It, it, you know, it was like revival. And it's a better revival in jail than it is here in church. Because you know what? People are getting set free there. I've seen people saved, healed. I've seen, uh, I, I've, I've, I've ran into demonic depre uh, oppressions. But you run into that. But you know what? Jesus was there. And I didn't do anything but just follow him. And that's all you have to do today. You don't have to do anything because he's here. You know, he loved me when I was still a sinner. But I, when I went into jail, there was one scripture that really got a hold of me that he put in my heart. It was John 6, 44. It's about drawing him to him. Listen, I'm going to say something that for all of you is common knowledge. How many people here are part of an addiction recovery ministry? Raise your hand. That's a fair amount. Put your hands down. You're still loved by Jesus, but put your hands down. Uh, everybody here that's just part of a ministry or a church, that wait, they go to church here. Raise your hand. Do you mind if I do this? Okay, put your hands down. Pastor, everybody didn't come. Uh, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, here's what I want to do, okay? I'm going to say something that's going to sound like common sense knowledge to you. If you want to turn it down more in my wedge, my vocal, if it starts feedback, that'll probably help the problem. Or I can get back further away from this. I don't know. Oh, we're making this work, guys. I usually get a couple hours to sound check, but I'll take five minutes in front of everybody. I can do that. Um, here's what we're going to do. We're going to close our eyes. Not because it's more spiritual, by the way. You can pray with your eyes open. Jesus is still there, right? But I want you to not be distracted by people around you or things going on around you. And I want you to just focus in on him. And that goes for the camera guys for just a minute, if you don't mind. Just, just for just a second. I'm not trying to be rude, but I, I want us to just, just, just hold on for a second, right? Lots going on, lots of happening, but... <sighs> We have to recognize him. We got to pay attention to him. I'm just some guy that's here to adore him just like you, right? And here's the deal. He's real and he's here. He's real and he's here. I want you to allow your imagination to be redeemed for a second. I want you to picture Jesus. I want you to see him really just like the whole moment. What's it feel like, you know? Like, I know it sounds cheesy. I'm not telling you to put your feet in the sand and eat some pita bread. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> really picture Jesus.
how would you worship him? Like there's no one around. It's just you and him. You actually really see Jesus. How do you worship him? I don't want you to picture some worship leader. I don't want you to picture some church member that you think is holy. I want you to see you worshiping him. you really see him I promise you're not like sorry Jesus I, I'm not a hand raiser I don't put my arms up <laughs> I'm sorry Jesus I, I'm, you know I'm not going to get on my knees that's weird uh, You know, all that stuff is out the window when you really see him right look I can play music for you and people can get up and say things all day Right now, you actually see him and actually talk to him and actually hear his voice. This is the most important moment, right? So right now, I just pray in Jesus' name that we would get lost in his presence and not in anything else, not in my presence, not in the presence of people around us, but in his presence. He's worthy. And the way you see yourself worshiping him, you don't have to wait. You don't have to wait to do that. You can do that now.
cigarettes, drinking marijuana, all that kind of stuff. Which is like kindergarten, right? It's like kindergarten for drug addicts. But by 15, it's Coke, LSD, pills, I'm selling drugs, all that kind of stuff, right? By the time I'm 17, I'm a full out crystal meth addict every day almost for nearly six years. It's crazy, right? Um, and during this time, I'm the guy that hates, 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 say it three times to make my point, Christianity, okay? <laughs> you know, we are such instinctively selfish people that if you ever feel the need to pull over the side of the road and start ugly crying over somebody coming to Jesus, that is the Holy Spirit wooing you to intercede on behalf of that person. So pay attention. Can't tell me how many times, you know, travel in the country over the last however many years. But I've had someone come up to me crying at the end of a service and say, hey, will you pray for my brother? Will you pray for my sister? Will you pray for my husband? Will you pray for my friend? And, and I will. And I will today, too. But there's a reason you're broken before me over this person. It's because there's something about you getting on your knees and speaking their name out before the King of Kings. The Holy Spirit has burdened you for that person. And your prayers are not only important, they're powerful. Why choose only Ananias to go to Paul? Why not send all the people to Paul? Because there was something God wanted to do. Not just through Ananias, and not just through you, but in you. That you have no idea. Right? People are always like, man, I want to be in the fullness of life. I want to feel alive, man. I want to be awake. Begin to pray. Begin to seek the Father's heart for other people. Often we're like, I just don't feel close to the Lord until something bad happens to us. And then we're praying to Jesus like nonstop. Right? Because it's all about us. And it's okay to go to your Father and go, hey, Dad, <laughs> things really suck. And I need your help, you know? Let's get real, okay? So this book was given to me. And having told you how against Christianity I was, this is the most miraculous part of the story. Because I didn't claw somebody's eyes out or cry to them. I was like, cool, thanks, you know? Imagine the person that you know that hates Christianity the most, and you offering them a Bible, and they'll be like, cool, man, thanks. You'd be like, what the world? The Red Sea just parted, right? So here I am, I got this book, it's three o'clock in the morning. It is seemingly the most improbable place for someone to get saved. Nobody's playing softly and quietly in the corner. Nobody's preaching, not that that wouldn't have helped. I've literally got drugs on the side table next to me. And it's the kindness of a very real God. Like, he's real. Can you just, like, for a second, pretend you're in a desert island, you've never heard anything about Jesus, you don't know anything about it, and you read the Bible, and you encounter him, and you're like, oh my gosh, it's all real. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You're not going, ah, they're not going to get me, because you don't have that filter, <laughs> right? So here I am, and I'm like, okay, what in the world? And we begin to have this internal dialogue that goes something like this, because I'm encountering the real Thing. And I know it. Like, I know it. And he, we begin to have this internal dialogue that goes something like this. Stephen? He sounded cooler than that in my head. But Stephen, right? Stephen. Uh, Stephen, I'm real and I'm good. Just told you this, right? And I have a purpose for your life. What are you going to do about it? And the good thing, like I told you, I just like, psh, man. All those words I just said, God's good, he's got a purpose for my life, he's real. That all sounds like I pulled it out of a book called Christian Things to Say. You know, like take a sentence, insert those words, you're going to sound really spiritual, right? But God has a way of saying something you've heard a million times, and he knows what you need to hear. Just like I said, the goodness thing, right? He knows what you need to hear. You can say something you've heard a billion times like, I love you. And you've never really heard I love you before. Like you've heard it from people, but you've never really heard it. And it unlocks something that's been dormant inside you your entire life. And in 
that moment, I just remember being like, God, okay, I want to give you my life. I want to quit all this addiction, all this darkness, all this blech that I've known for so long. But I'm the dude. People come to me for stuff. <laughs> stuff. You know what I mean? My whole life's built around this. God, I want to give you my life, but I don't know how. I can't even remember what it's like to be a little kid and not need something to make me feel good. To make me feel happy. God, I want you, but I can't. And in a thought more powerful than words, the Holy Spirit breathed something into me that changed me for the rest of my life. He said, Stephen, you won't do it. I'll do it. It's just like the basics of Christianity. I believed God. Like I believed him. You know, in the book of John, it says the only work that the Father seeks of you is to believe. Jeremy, to believe in him. Not in you being like, now nah, I'm saved, Jesus. I got this from here. Thanks a lot. You know, to believe. And so I fell to my knees. I gave my life to Christ. And I went from addiction to redemption, from meth addict to worship leader because God is real. Listen. I don't get anything if you guys fall for my story. I get in a van and I leave and it makes no difference. But God is real. Can it go from here to here? Can it go from here to here? He's real. It's all real. When I leave here, when you go home tonight, you turn all the lights off, you're laying in bed and nobody's on a stage giving you the message. He's going to be real. I pray in Jesus' name that he's more real to you in that moment than he ever has been. That there's a closeness to him that if you don't know him, freaks you out <laughs> and puts you on your knees. And if you do know him, comforts you and reminds you that he's real, encourages you, gives you strength to keep going. Now listen to me. You may think this world matters like in the sense of like what people think you are right now the only thing keeping you from raising your hand if you're not raising your hand is the fear of what you look like just everybody please close your eyes and just give everybody a chance to kind of do this okay none of it matters you are going to blink and be in the presence of the living god this world is fleeting what you think is important is not. You will see him and go, why did I care about anything else? Nothing mattered more than you. Nothing ever mattered more than you. You hold my destiny, God. You don't know what the best you looks like. Do not fall for the lie that it's not possible for you. I want you to raise your hand right now if you want to give your life to Christ. In the name of Jesus, Father, we love you. And this is not meant to embarrass you. Can I just shut that stuff down right now? Come on. Shut it down. The enemy is telling you, don't you do it. You're not. You're going to look like a wussy. You're going to look stupid. It's embarrassing. Don't do it. He is a punk, y'all. Come on. Raise your hand if you want to give your life to Jesus. And listen to me. When you put your hand up, you're breaking through every curse breathed over your life. Are you hearing me? Enough is enough. I love you. That's what this is about, not shame and embarrassment. I want you to put your hand up and don't take it down. Let's go. If you want to give your life to Jesus, don't take it down. Now, when I tell people to open their eyes in a second, please... Do not put your hand down. Jesus said, if you will acknowledge me before man, I will acknowledge you before my Father. Please, the opinion of people is stupid. <laughs> Straight up dumb. You will never regret it. Besides, who cares what anyone here thinks? 
Your father is the only one that cares yeah. really about you. As much as we try, even with his heart, we can only get a glimpse of the depth of his love for you. It is crazy. Now, right now, everybody with your hands up. Everybody open your eyes. Do not put your hands down. Please. Oh, Lord. Please right here. And even for men, true manhood starts with humility. But having been an addict for so many years of my life, crazy amount of time, that was the hardest thing for me to lay down. I don't want to look weak, but the beginning of it all is when I say, man, I can't do this crap. This is ridiculous. You know, let's be real. I can't. I don't care about sounding churchy. <laughs> I don't work for any church. I can't get fired, okay? <laughs> but at the end of the day, I just know this. God's real. And I, don't, I don't care about selling the CDs. I don't care about anybody following me on some kind of stupid social media thing. I want to see people get saved. So right now, in the name of Jesus, you guys repeat after me. Jesus. Now look, there's this voice. It's like your inside voice. Your parents will be like, use your inside voice. We're going to use our... I'm, like, what would, how would you yell at somebody that cut you off in traffic? Ready? <laughs> like, we're mad at it. Everybody join in. Ready? Jesus! Jesus! I believe! I believe! That you are the Christ! That you are the Christ! The Son of the living God! Son of the living God! My Lord and Savior! My Lord and Savior! That you died for me! That you died for me! That you gave your life for me! That you gave your life for me! And now I give you mine! Now I give you mine! In Jesus' name! You're not a worm saved by grace. <laughs> You're a son and daughter of God. You're royalty, bro. Like, that sounds cheesy, but it's real. Right? Thank you, Jesus. You know the enemy. There's power 
in his name. And I want you to say it, and I want you to clap, not for me, for him. What would you do if he was right there? And guess what? He's right there. <laughs> He's here now. If I could just disappear and we could do this, that would be great. Ready? Count, count three. Like, I want you to really make the person you're with fear for their life. Okay? Like, you might have a body hit you somewhere crazy. Okay? Here we go. Whoa! Work it up. Come on.